Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about local anesthetics and I'm going to make this video in few parts. So in today's presentation, I'll be talking about LA's introduction and then LA's are either amides or esters. So I'll be talking about the differences and also about mechanism of action, a little bit about pharmacokinetics as well as side effects. All right, so let's begin. So largest category of this questions that come from LA mainly focuses on the ability to distinguish between amide LAs from esters, okay? So we have LAs that are amides and we have esters. Let me write it down for you. So we have amides. We also have esters, okay? And amides are always metabolized in the liver, whereas esters are metabolized in the blood plasma with the help of an enzyme that is called as pseudoesterase. This is very important to know where they are metabolized. And amides examples are lidocaine, mepivacaine, Bupivacaine, prelocaine, and dibucaine. And esters are procaine, cocaine, tetracaine. Now, how do I remember the difference between the amides and esters? Is, see, both the LAs are ending in cane, right? But amides have an extra I before cane, whereas esters do not have. Like here in cocaine, you see cane, but you do not see an I before it. So it means it belongs to esters. If you see an I before the cane part, then it belongs to amides. That's how I remember. All right. Now I have a question for you guys. Which class of drugs has the, consist the most consistency in structure. It's the LAs. LAs are either amides or esters. They differ only in the structure of the intermediate chain. Here you can see LAs differ in amide and esters only by having a ester form or an amide form in the intermediate chain. All right. So it's either an amide or an ester that connects the aromatic group to the secondary or tertiary terminals. Now, next kind of questions that are usually asked in the exam are mainly to do with the toxic reactions of local anesthetics, either due to the high systemic levels of local anesthetics in general or to a specific agent such as prelocaine, which can cause meth methemoglobinemia. So I'll be talking about that in detail. But before that, let me write down few points that are important. So we spoke about amides and esters. So let's have a quick recap. So what is the difference? How do we differentiate between amide and esters? Amides are usually metabolized in the liver, whereas esters are metabolized in the blood plasma with the help of pseudoesterase. And we have studied that amides, they have another I before cane, that's how I remember, and esters do not have so. And the only difference between amide and esters is in the intermediate bond. So it's either an amide or an ester that connects the aromatic group to the secondary and tertiary amino terminus, okay? And uh, now we have studied that there are toxic reactions to LA either due to high systemic levels of local anesthetics in general or to a specific agent such as prelocaine, which causes methemoglobinemia. Okay. Now, let us talk about esters as well as amides. Okay. So amides, lidocaine, bupivacaine, and I'll just write down a few, okay? And esters, we have procaine, cocaine, all right? Esters are more toxic in nature, okay? And um, that's the reason amides are used much. 
Lidocaine is safest in children and it is packed in two person solution. Next, we have bupivacaine, which is not safe in children and longest duration is 0.5%. And sorry, bupivacaine has longest duration of action and it is not safe in children, whereas lidocaine is safe in children. Now we have mepivacaine. Mepivacaine causes vasodilation and it has two concentrations that is 2% and 3%. Okay, next we have articane, which has shortest duration. Okay, 4%. So, bupivacaine has longest duration. All right. And another point to remember is which one is safe in children? Lidocaine is safe in children. Okay, whereas bupivacaine is not safe in children. All right. Now, we have prelocaine. This is what causes methemoglobinemia, where too little oxygen, like what happens exactly is this kind of condition can be seen when you use other anesthetics in large amount, but in particular to prelocaine, it can be observed a lot. Okay, so this is about these and about esters, they are toxic and they have uh, let me tell you a difference between amides and esters. Amides have half-life in comparison to esters, all right? Now here, what did we study in this slide specifically is esters are more toxic. And in amides, we have lidocaine, which is safe in children, and it is packed in 2% of solution. Bupivacaine has longest duration of action, and articaine has shortest duration of action. Bupivacaine is present in 0.5 percentage of solution. Mepivacaine has vasodilation 2% and 3%. Articane has shortest duration, that is 4%, and prelocane causes side effect methemoglobinemia. All right, but let me tell you something about mepivacaine is it can be packed without vasoconstrictor. Okay. It can be packed without vasoconstrictor. Now let us talk about mechanism of action of LA. Now what does this LA do to our body? Like what effect does this drug has in a person receiving? So if I'm going to take LA, what is what am I going to experience? What is exactly happening is this drug actually will block a part of the neuron, right? Which part it's it blocks the afferent, it works on afferent neurons. And what do they actually do inside the neuron is they block the sodium channel. So we are going to talk about how is this happening. Okay, so. So what happens is here you can see like I'm, I have drawn a picture to show the membrane, the neuron membrane and how the drug this is non-polarized or non-charged part, and this is the charged part of the drug. Now, how does this drug pass through the membrane and block sodium channel? Here we see sodium channel, like let me tell you again, this is the sodium channel, this is the membrane, hydrophilic membrane. We have the drug over here, okay? This is the non-charged part, and this is the charged part of the drug, which is in equilibrium. So you can say that why can't the drug just directly block the sodium from outside, right? It does not happen so. Why means the drug needs to be charged in order to pass through the membrane. So first the drug in the non-charged form enters the membrane and then acquires a little bit charge inside. Okay, the pH inside is a little bit acidic. Once the drug is charged, it then goes and blocks the sodium from inside. Okay, 
So let me just give you a quick review. Due to their distinct chemical properties, LA are able to pass, the drug is able to pass through the neuronal membrane and bind it to the specific receptor and blocks the sodium influx. All right. And LA are weak bases. So only non-charged or non-protonated ions can pass the membrane. Inside the cell, here it is acidic pH is acidic. So here protonation occurs and only charged ions block sodium. This is very, very important. Okay. So let me write it down for you. So what happens exactly is the drug is in this form and then only the non-charged part, right? passes through the membrane. Then inside it acquires charge and binds to the receptor. And then what is happening over here? It blocks the sodium influx. Okay. So this is about the mechanism of action of LA. Okay, so we have understood that it cannot be blocked from outside. It needs to be blocked from inside. The drug has to penetrate inside and block from within. So drug has ionized and non-ionized form. This is non-ionized or non-charged form. And here it is the charged form, right? We have studied that only the charged form can block the sodium ions. Now, what happens in case of an infected tissue or inflamed tissue. So what happens in the case of inflamed tissue is the pH is lower than normal, okay? And what happens there is the non-ionized charge can diffuse through the hydrophobic part and goes inside. It's important because inflamed tissue decreases non-ionized form that is available. So if a tissue is inflamed or or infected, what happens is non-ionized form decreases, is not available. So this form over here will not be available. So if it, the non-ionized form is in less quantity, how do you think that it will pass through the membrane? We need it to be in the non-ionized form. The drug has to be in the non-ionized form in order to pass through the membrane, get charged, then it blocks, right? So non-ionized form, is not like it gets decreased. All right. Now that was about the mechanism of action. So we understood that non-charged part enters the membrane, acquires charge, binds to the receptors and blocks the sodium influx. So the main part that you need to understand about local anesthetics mechanism of action is it blocks sodium channel. All right. Now, so now we have understood that there might be some questions about mechanics, mechanism of action of local anesthetics. They prevent the generation of nerve impulses by interfering with sodium transport into the neuron. All right. And uh, we have understood that only the non-ionized form can penetrate the tissue membrane. Inflamed tissues have lower than normal pH, which decrease the amount of non-ionized form available to penetrate. All right, there is an, another point that is important that is critical length. It is nothing but complete anesthesia occurs only when three consecutive nodes of Ranvier are blocked. All right. Now we have pharmacokinetics. That is what body does to the drug and how is a body processing the drug. All right. So before we studied the mechanism of action where we are seeing how the drug affects the body. Now we are going to study about how our body reacts to the drug. What does our body do to the drug and how is our body able to process it? All right. So at the injection site, at the injection site, if there is increased blood flow, then it will carry away drug faster from the site, okay? It carries drug 
past the from side okay now if there is increase in solubility or hydrophobicity then there will be more long duration of action we have studied previously i hope you remember that you know we have studied that uh, let me just draw quickly so this is sodium channel so if you know the membrane should be hydrophilic because it in order for the drug to pass quickly all right so that is related to this part so just have a quick review so what happens the drug non ionized form enters the membrane and then after passing through the membrane it becomes charged and then it blocks the sodium channel okay now if the more hydrophobic more drug can diffuse through the hydrophobic membrane all right and if there is more protein binding then there is longer duration of action of the drug so drug always has an affinity towards the receptor site all right and its receptors are usually more proteins they are usually proteins okay now about pka values you just have to remember that lower the value stronger the acids okay so it means it will give up the proton faster and uh, it will be non ionized form and it will diffuse faster and will have fast action so what happens when a drug gives up an ion form so if a drug gives up the ion form it will be non ionized form then it can go through the uh, membrane easily and then it will block the sodium by becoming charged again and after becoming charged it's going to block the sodium so what will happen if the pk value lower the value stronger the acid what is it means is it will make sure to give up the proton faster so it will be non ionized form and it will diffuse faster and will have a fast action okay so we have to remember few of the values mepivacaine is and lidocaine procaine articaine is 7.8 and bupivacaine bupivacaine is 8.1 so now let us do some questions all right so let me just adjust my screen just give me one second yeah which of the following is a local anesthetic subject to the inactivation by plasma esterases so i hope you remember i have explained let me use a uh, ink all right so what do you think the answer is is it procaine lidocaine prelocaine mepivacaine and bupivacaine now i have told you this las are either amides or esters and esters which of the following anesthetic which of the following is a local anesthetic subject to inactivation by plasma esterase now amides are metabolized in the liver and esters are metabolized in plasma with the help of esterases so now we need to find which one is the ester over here right so about the cane if there is no i then that is an ester so i see only this so this is the option now procaine differs from lidocaine in that now again the same question amides and esters procaine is an ester so how does it differ from that of a lidocaine so options are procaine is a amino benzoic acid ester and lidocaine is not definitely because lidocaine is an amide lidocaine is a meta amino benzoic acid ester and procaine is not no lidocaine is actually an amide and procaine is an ester and the duration of action of procaine is longer than that of the equal total dose of lidocaine that's false procaine hydrochloride is metabolized into diethyl amino ethanol and benzoic acid that's not true so procaine differs from lidocaine only by one difference what is that difference procaine is an ester and uh, lidocaine is an amide and uh, the option is first one 
now we have which of the following local anesthetics would be expected to produce a sensitization reaction in a patient allergic to lidocaine. So a patient is allergic to lidocaine. It means a patient is allergic to amides. So you cannot really give an amides because it will cause a reaction. So only option is to ester. So which of the following local anesthetics would be expected to produce a sensitization reaction in a patient allergic to lidocaine? Is it mepivacaine, tetracaine, procaine, prelocaine, dibucaine? So you get the options and take few seconds to try to answer. So the answer is actually mepivacaine, prelocaine, and dibucaine. Now, the hydrolysis of procaine occurs mainly in. So procaine is an ester. It mainly occurs in plasma with the help of pseudocholinesterase enzyme. All right. Now, which of the following is a local anesthetic subject to inactivation by plasma esterase? So answer is esters. Now, it is not prelocaine, it is not lidocaine, it is not mepivacaine, it's not bupivacaine because we need esters. These all are amides. So the answer is tetracaine. Amide type of local anesthetics are metabolized in the liver and ester types are metabolized in the plasma by cholinesterase. Use of prelocaine carries the risk of which of the following adverse effects? It is methemoglobinemia. All right, so that is all for today and I hope you have understood in clear about what are the types of LA, what is the mechanism of action and how is the drug reacting to the body and how is our body reacting to the drug. All right, so in case you have any questions, you can leave in the comments below and you, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and in case you did not subscribe please subscribe to my channel and do like the video if you have found it interesting and if you took some lessons back to homes in that case please do leave a like thank you